build a transition state in Hypercam and optimize it using WebMO and Gaussian. The best way to do transition state optimization is to use a combination of Hypercam and Gaussian. Hypercam does have a transition state optimization feature, but it uses the semi-empirical method, which is not really designed for optimizing transition states and often has difficulty with that. Correction, you can use ab initio methods for transition state optimization or molecule optimization with Hyperchem. However, it's very slow. And in most cases, it's too slow to be practical. So what I recommend is uh, to build a molecule, manipulate it close to a transition state using re the restraints function, save it as a .mol file, then import it into WebMO and run the Gaussian transition state optimization with a small or moderate basis set Hartree-Fock or a density functional theory method. And finally, check that the transition state is a true transition state, namely that it has a single negative frequency, vibrational frequency that corresponds to the reaction coordinate. So I'll illustrate this using a famous reaction that deals all the reaction where we want to optimize this transition state. And we'll start with building a, a cyclohexene and then stretching these bonds and changing some bond angles so that it looks something like the transition state. For the transition state optimization process in Gaussian to work, the starting point must be fairly close to a, the actual transition state. Okay, so let's build our uh, cyclohexene. And you'll notice that while this is a accurate rec uh, representation of cyclohexene, it's uh, it needs to be it needs to have a, a plane of symmetry and to have the dienophile bond uh, parallel to the pi system of the, the diene to be close to the to the uh, transition state. So this has to be fixed. The way to do this is with a uh, uh, with restraints where you first have to define some variables. This So this torsion angle, for instance, here uh, is going to need to be uh, z equal to zero. Let's call that angle one. And of course, the two reacting bonds need to be defined. Go on bond one and bond two. And another variable that will help in defining this is the torsion angle around one end here, which should be about 50 degrees. It's called an angle two. And that puts the dienophile part underneath the ends uh, of the diene rather than out on the sides. So you do set up restraints. Let's add them all. And we'll set these to a, a reasonable value, which it turns out is about 2.2 angstroms. You know, and the force constant that's in here, which is equal to the penalty for not being equal to this value in kcals per mole, approximately. It's an approximate definition. Uh, angle one, we said, was that uh, should be about zero. I forgot to set this value there. Okay. And angle two, it turns out, needs to be about oh, minus 50 degrees or so. So we'll set it like that. And just to see that 
what's happening here a little more clearly. Let's use uh, balls and cylinders. Okay, now we can use semi-empirical methods to uh, do this preliminary optimization process. We always want to check total charge and multiplicity that we're using restricted hard refock electrons paired in orbitals. And then we'll do optimization. Okay, that's close enough. Let's do file save as. Oh, it deals older transition state. Okay, now let's go over to uh, WebMO, create a new job, import molecule. Okay, and we'll call this uh, deals older a transition state. Let's use a, a minimal basis set 321G, uh, the hartree fock method, and transition state optimization. This is similar to a, a normal optimization, except it's looking for the for the top of a of a stability geometry curve rather than the valley. And let's uh, throw four processors at it. And let's just take a look at the input file. I always like to save the checkpoint files, the name checkpoint file. Hartree Fock 321G. And this uses the transition state optimization process. This will maybe take half a minute, so be patient, stand by. You can always check the progress of these by Going ahead and opening up the log file and plotting the change in energy. You notice here the energy is going up um, rather than and flattening out, rather than down and flattening out, as you'd expect for normal optimization. Okay, there it is. And here is our, so it looks uh, fairly close. Let's see here, uh, the 321G, the uh, bond link 2.21 angstroms, close to what we had it set before. And it does have a plane of symmetry. Okay, now let's to check that this is a, a uh, authentic transition state, we'll do a frequency job, new job using this geometry. vibrational frequency Down here is our frequencies, and there is a single negative frequency, and we'll animate that. And indeed, that, those are the 
core, the that is a reacting coordinates for this uh, transition state. So that's how to build and optimize a diels alder transition state. Now, if you have different atoms around here, you can use this basic model and do substitutions with a basic method, and it should come out very similar.